Good evening, everyone. I, Dr. Priya Vani, on behalf of Academia IPSM, would like to welcome you all on this year's first PG lecture series on eConnect platform in the PG. In today, we have gathered here to get an orientation to community medicine and future prospects. To enlighten us on the same, we have with us today Dr. Bhavesh Modi, sir, Professor and Head, Department of Community and Family Medicine, Ames Rajkot. He has also done his MPH Health Policy and Systems and MBA Healthcare from the John Hopkins University, USA. A record of creating far-reaching national health programs involving tobacco control, TB, HIV, co-infection, and much more. Along with him, we have with us Dr. Abhishek Raut, sir, professor at the Dr. Sushila Nair School, of Public Health incorporating the Department of Community Medicine at the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences, Sevagram. He has a vast experience in research and currently he is involved in implementing research of ARAM, Nurturing Care for Early Childhood Development Program, which is being scaled up in all districts of Maharashtra. He is the lead investigator for the ICMR Advanced Center for Clinical Trials. I welcome our esteemed speakers on behalf of IPSM eConnect. Welcome, sir. And as we progress, as young doctors, we are filled with anxiety and abundant questions when post MBBS, we join an MD course in community medicine. So today, let us alleviate our doubts and listen from our teachers. To start with, what are the skills required to be a good community physician? How to build them during residency year by year, starting from the first year, progressing until the exams? Uh, Dr. Abhishek, sir, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Priya. And uh, just give me a moment. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, just give me a moment before I share my screen. Are the slides visible? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. Uh, so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Abhishek, and uh, I'll be talking on what uh, specifically Priya mentioned, like uh, how we can enhance our competencies, skills during the three years of our residency. And I'd like to start with certain disclaimers. Uh, First of them is the whatever views that I'm going to express are purely personal uh, and they are based on my limited experiences and may be debatable. Uh, uh, the only intention is to share what has helped me as an individual and not to demean any individual or any organization. And uh, I express uh, my heartfelt gratitude to all the mentors, or people who have helped me uh, to shape my own thoughts, views, and particularly the readings and the books uh, that has also contributed uh, usually in this process. Uh, when I was thinking of uh, how to, uh, what to talk exactly, so uh, Priya was talking about alleviating uh, the fears and believe me, I, even today I have butterflies in my stomach. Okay? So it's the process uh, that never ends. And uh, when I was thinking that how I should uh, uh, shape this talk, I thought that uh, maybe I can focus it more around uh, how, um, what has helped me grow as a community, a public health person, as a community physician. And uh, I'll start with the very first basic question. And uh, uh, I think many of the young postgraduates here would have been asked this particular question. And that was the first question that was asked to me when I had joined as a first year PG in my department. And the question was whether it's a love or an arranged marriage. And uh, uh, I mean, it took me some time to understand uh, what this question meant. And basically it meant is whether I had taken up to community medicine by chance or by choice. Uh, don't worry, I am not going to answer it for you and neither do I expect you to answer this for me. Uh, but then uh, this is often the very first question. And uh, a few years later, uh, like when uh, this question was asked to one of my mentors, uh, he asked, answered it in a very interesting way. Uh, he said is, what is important is, uh, do you consider yourself to be married or not? Okay? 
whether it is a love marriage or arranged marriage uh, what is important is whether you consider uh, yourself married or not uh, are you committed to make it work okay uh, if you are committed to make it work then whether it's a love marriage or arranged marriage uh, it is not going to make much of a difference what is going to make difference is whether uh, you are committed to make it work pani mein to aap gir hi gaye ho so do you want to come out of that water and swim in some other waters or uh, you want to do uh, a descent uh, you want to put up a descent show when uh, you have been in when you are in that water you may have jumped or you may have been pushed whatever okay so uh, then we have all have the basic dilemma whether to continue in this subject or not and this primarily comes uh, with uh, basic understanding that even today i mean uh, I, like i said uh, some of these views are open to debate uh, even today uh, many of our uh, young post graduates who join the subject uh, they do not come by choice uh, because they are not getting anything better so within whatever is available this probably is a better option and then uh, they land up with the subject and then they always have this conflict and i distinctly remember one of my batchmates uh, he had this huge conflict aur ye 3 saal tak ye conflict chalta raha he completed his md Uh, but after completion he even worked as a, in academia for one one and a half years and after that he suddenly realized that this is not my cup of tea and i want to switch my career and then he again went back and pursued few other courses diplomas and now uh, he is working in a pharma company uh, so what i am trying to say basically is the early jitna jaldi is dilemma se you are able to come out Uh, the helpful it will be uh, for us as uh, public health professionals as community medicine professionals to think about our own self to think about what competences we need to have uh, i am not going to share a list of books or what you should read in which semester or not uh, this is what uh, i have even quoted the source and this is what we are expected uh, to know or to do and if you look at the wheel that is on your right it involves all type of activities which is which it is much much vast uh, as compared to maybe some of the other disciplines like if you look here we have case management we have referral and follow up we have screening surveillance outreach we also have advocacy policy development uh, we are expected to work with the community build coalitions uh, collaborate with people uh, teach train uh, demonstrate leadership functions and what not and uh, even our M- nmc mci whatever we want to call it uh, even the iapsm uh, declaration also mentions of some of the same things so uh, these are some of the topics that uh, we are expected to cover which will help us to discharge these expectations or these functions and uh, you can look at it from very many different angles these are the global competencies which the who expects uh, any public health person to have if they want to work for achieving the outcomes related to universal health coverage which currently is the motto which is driving the entire international agenda and they expect us to be people centered uh, they ex- expect us to make decisions have effective communication collaborate uh, have evidence informed practice and uh, inspire personal conduct okay? uh, you can read uh, i will not go uh, in detail uh, i've mentioned the source and i'll be sharing the slides as well and uh, it, it there are many uh, competency frameworks that are available including what we have uh, uh, that has been given by our own nmc and almost all of them are comparable like if you think of all these competency frameworks they will all will talk almost the same language uh, they will talk about uh, skills related to prevention promotion uh, some skills related to the curative medicine maybe the palliative uh, uh, care they'll talk about organizational management leadership skills uh and uh, advocacy communication collaboration so this is what we are basically expected to or focus upon and uh, uh how we can do this during our residency so i'll start with this slide and this was one of the most important concept that i learned from my mentor it was what uh, uh, i think uh, stephen covey calls this is as first things first putting first things first in his book and uh, what the first things meant for me personally was one was internalize internalize means jaise main pehle bol raha tha if you are having that conflict uh, whether to be or not to be in this discipline jitna jaldi aap usko accept karoge the sooner you are able to internalize that uh, i have to make it work i have the commitment to make it work i have the commitment to excel in this particular discipline the better it would be for you 
for their discipline and for the community or the people whom you eventually plan to serve. Uh, B and longing. That means you need to think about where eventually you are going to belong. Okay, uh, where eventually you are going to end up. Okay, and uh, if that there is if there is no clarity around that, maybe you can start in that direction. So I'm not saying that by the end of three years or during three years you should have absolute clarity. If I have to say for myself, I'll say even I do not have absolute clarity after spending almost 12, 13 years in this discipline. But then at least you can start thinking in this direction. How that I'll uh, talk in some of the subsequent slides. And one of the things that we need to do as a effective public health practitioner is reflect, think about what we do, why we do, uh, what we are trying to achieve. Uh, so this is this is some of this becomes a very basic and essential skill that we need to have. Uh, three years of residency, uh, what we are expected to do, I'll only say, and like Priya was talking about, we are doing a lot of work in nurturing care. And they say that whatever nurturing care we are able to provide to children during the first three years of life, it forms a foundation for the rest of their life. It will determine how much they will study, how much they will earn, what will be their psychological health and whatnot. I'll extrapolate the same logic to the three years of our residency. Okay. So the three year, first three years of life and the first three years of our residency should help us build the foundations for our personal and professional life. And just to, because I'm drawing on the same nurturing care framework, I've tried to come up with this five broad domains that we can focus on. First is understanding your true self. We'll be talking on each one of them briefly. Uh, being solution driven, having a learning mindset, identifying or creating opportunities for authentic learning and having our own networks and collaborations. Now, what we understand by uh, being your true self, the most important message that I had got from my mentor was be authentic. Joby aapke strengths hai, weaknesses hai, be true to yourself. Do not try to project what you are not. Okay? Jo nahi aata hai, accept that. That will be the first step to improve in that particular direction. So today I might not be good. So when I started, I was not that good in RCTs. I just books, mein padha tha, but I did not have much exposure to RCTs. But then, uh, because I was committed for that, I wanted to develop my capacity in that particular domain. I made a conscious effort to build my skills, competencies, capacities in that particular domain. Second important point is understand what you stand for. What are your values? Okay? What are those things regarding which you will not compromise? And this is very important to identify one with what kind of people you want to work with and with what kind of organization uh, you want to work for. Okay? Like I'll give my own example. Like, uh, if I, I had some clarity around this, that I will not like to work uh, in an organization which uh, would be oriented, uh, which would be totally profit oriented. So probably I would want not like to work in such an organization. And that helped me to decide where I would eventually want to work and with whom I would want to work. What drives you? So what is your fuel for motivation? Uh, is it recognition? Is it meaningful work that you intend to do? Is it money? So you need to think about it. Each one of us will have our own answers, but then depending on what drives you will help you decide what you want to eventually focus upon. And you should start building the clarity around this uh, during three years of your residency and how that we'll talk about. Uh, this was a very important concept, uh, which goes by this uh, line, do not come in your own way. So we all have certain thoughts about our own self. May ye kar paunga, may ye shayad nahi kar paunga. And many things, these are our own beliefs, our own inhibitions come in our own way. They stop us from uh, doing good, doing meaningful work, from excelling. And this is what we mean by do not come in your own way. Okay? And uh, again, uh, for being true to yourself, uh, this was asked to me by one of my mentors that, when you are my age, when you are maybe 50, 55 years of age, uh, what will make you happy? Okay, what will bring a smile on your face? So that is what we mean by how would you want the end to be? Okay? And start thinking about that. I understand each one of us may not have clarity around that, but you can start thinking in that direction and gradually believe me, the clarity would come. And how? Uh, 
it is through some of this uh, opportunities that you may have for authentic learning okay so uh, important is to understand the context we can never so uh, one of another important things that i learned from my mentor was he said you will never see a surgeon uh, who does not go to his operation theater you will never find a internal medicine physician who does not attend his wards or opd's diligently so if we want to work for public health for promoting health of the public how can we separate isolate ourselves from the context so try to understand the context work within the context uh, be connected with the ground realities be connected with the field and that will come from experiential learning okay so uh, isliye deliberately i have not put what to read when to read okay i you can figure that out or you can approach later on to us uh, but then what we believe is experiential learning karke dekho okay uh, rct seekhna hai so participate in rct the first rct that i participated in was a uh, like on in the capacity of a medical officer just me uh, but because wo bilkul niche se shuru kiya so today i have the confidence competence to lead uh, the entire site at our institutional level okay uh, try to apply what you read so just don't read but then you may not have those opportunities within your uh, own uh, department or where uh, eventually you would be working but then you can create those opportunities like uh, even without uh, you can do those small small studies like uh, Uh, this was what i personally uh, again learned uh, when i learned about participatory action research and one of my uh, guides mentors told me you don't need funding for that if you have the will you will be able to create those opportunities in your field practice area uh, where you work so just don't read but try to put it into practice uh, try to apply whatever you read and be mindful of the purposeful learning what eventually uh, that uh, you want to achieve uh, क्या वो पर्पज है विच इज ड्राइविंग यू सो दैट विल ऑल्सो हेल्प यू टू मेक दो चॉइसेस जैसे आई हैड क्लैरिटी की इवेंचुअली आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क मच मे बी इन द डोमेन ऑफ एनवीरमेंटल हेल्थ सो मुझे मैंने उसको पढ़ा लेकिन सिर्फ जितने एग्जाम के लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है उतना ही पढ़ा सो वेर एवर वट वॉज लुकिंग एट एज माई पर्पज ऑफ बींग डिसेंट पब्लिक हेल्थ रिसर्चर सो आई फोकस माई स्किल्स अराउंड दैट and uh, this again might be controversial but then uh, this is again uh, goes with the theme of authentic learning that think from the heart okay if you really want to bring about change uh, mostly uh, trying to appeal to people uh, in a cognitive way may not make a difference okay but what will make a difference is if you are able to connect to them if you can if you are able to make them feel differently and that is only that will only happen if you are able to think uh, from the heart Uh, a learning mindset is very important okay uh, this was if i have to say one of the biggest learnings in whatever career that i have had till now i'll say the bullet number 1 okay uh, i used to take huge pride when my friends used to compliment me that you are a perfectionist and then uh, gradually i it dawned on me the limitations of being a perfectionist okay uh, what i realized eventually and in a much harder way that you should aim for progress and not perfection because there's nothing like perfection okay uh, what is perfect today it's going to change uh, tomorrow so if we are a better version of ourselves than what we were yesterday if we are a work in progress if we are on the path of progress uh, a learning mindset would ensure that and that will help us to evolve build competencies work on our own self uh, this is the second bullet point is again something which is pivotal i'll say critical a uh, develop reflective conversation so i want each one of you to think do you have those people around you with whom you can have such deep difficult and important conversations they could be your friends they could be your teachers they could be your guides and here where comes the role of mentors ki aap kya unke sath openly discuss kar sakte ho jaise i was lucky enough i was able to uh, discuss it with one of my mentors and she said me considering what you are telling me regarding where you want to end up you probably would be best suited to work in a ngo or a, in an organization that functions like a ngo and that is how she suggested me either to look out for a job opportunity with either cmc vellore or mjms sevagram i was fortunate it was oppor- available here and i landed up in sevagram okay uh, again this is important be committed to the cause not the competition some day you might win some day you might lose Uh, somebody will perform better than you but then if you are committed to your cause where you want to 
end up okay uh, what you want to eventually achieve what is that larger purpose if you are committed to that cause you will be able to absorb all the successes so called successes so called failures so what i've learned from my mentors is that there is nothing like a success or a failure and this mindset is very important all these are learning opportunities okay? so be committed to the cause view each opportunity as a learning opportunity which will help you to move towards your larger cause the larger picture the larger goal for which you are going to strive for uh, be open to feedback and criticism uh, so if there are uh, people uh, who criticize you who uh, uh, who are giving feedback to you value them believe me nothing will help you develop your skills and competencies uh, as compared to an honest candid feedback from any one of uh, your peers colleagues teachers mentors whoever and you don't need to fight your battles jisko jo important nahi hai which is not going to serve or contribute towards your cause towards the larger purpose for which you feel you are striving for do not waste your energies there so choose your battles wisely you don't need to confront everybody in all situations you should be wise enough uh, in choosing your battles so this is something which is very simple but very beautiful can we move a measurable distance with each passing day and say that we are a better version of ourselves uh for good networking and collaboration uh, practice gratitude nothing like that be thankful to all those who help you develop okay uh, during my residency days uh, me and my co pgs we had coined a term which we called as negative role models or defeated role models for that matter and i i think i all of us uh, me and my co pgs we express our profuse gratitude to all such so called defeated role models because they made it very crystal clear in front of our eyes regarding what we do not want to be okay if they would not have been there we would not have had that clarity ki humko kya nahi banna hai okay so and believe me we'll have many such models around us defeated role models around us so unse kya seekhna hai aur jo aspirational role models hai unse kya seekhna hai wo humko decide karna hai and practice gratitude towards each one of them think of win win opportunities when you are going to gain and people with whom you are going to network collaborate they are also going to gain nothing works like trust okay there's a very beautiful book uh, called the speed of trust believe me read it and your entire mindset would change okay uh, so trust people and from my own experience i can tell you particularly the work in arambh that we are doing it works like a magic okay uh, empathize people uh, try to understand their context their perspective and the way in which you will be able to connect with them gel with them that will again uh, help you in forming those deeper networks deeper collaborations and not just acquaintances okay uh, i am not sure if you have uh, there's a beautiful book known as the last lecture and uh, in that book uh, the author gives this concept of don't give up on people he says and this is what one of my mentors said that it's very easy to replace people in public health बट इसकी कोई गारंटी नहीं है कि जो रिप्लेसमेंट होगा इट वुड बी बेटर और नॉट वर्स देन द अर्लियर पर्सन सो डोंट गिव अप ऑन पीपल वेरी इजीली इफ यू गिव देम टाइम दे विल इवेंचुअली कम अप विद देयर गुड साइड्स बेटर साइड्स एंड लिसन टू अंडरस्टैंड डोंट लिसन टू जज एनीबडी लिसन टू अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टैंड दैट कॉन्टेक्स दिस विल हेल्प यू टू कनेक्ट विद देम टू एम्पथाइज विद देम अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट डोमेन ऑफ वॉट वी आर कॉलिंग एज द Uh, nurturing care uh, for our own uh, professional career is be solution driven this is what i've learned from uh, my mentor here in sevagram uh, garg sir uh, i many of you might be knowing him that do not be a part of the problem be part of the solution okay aap khud ko kis cheez ka part banana chahte ho problem ka part banana chahte ho ki solution ka part banana chahte ho the moment you are making yourself a part of the solution things would change 180 degrees Uh, thinking out of the box again i'll say it does not mean that you have to be very creative or innovative can you simplify things uh, can you uh, think of those uh, simpler things which will uh, help people relate to things which will help people understand the context and that is also very important uh, trying to simplify in science so everybody does not have to think very innovative uh, for thinking out of the box I've, i think i've already talked about defeated role models versus aspirational role models uh, work around your strengths to minimize weaknesses okay uh, this is what i learned uh, from a school teacher of my uh, 
son uh, i am a parent of an uh, a special child my son is autistic and uh, one of the most important messages that i got from the teacher there focus on what the child is able to do if you are going to focus on uh, what the child is not able to do the child will not lead to anywhere neither uh, you would be able to build that positive energy around the child so this is what i have been applying in my own life that work around your strengths try to minimize weaknesses so this will help you to minimize your weaknesses uh, don't give up and don't shy away from exploring karke uh, dekho that's a very simple philosophy uh, which uh, gandhi ji had also uh, proposed in his literature if you read his literature but then uh, if you try maybe you will be able to find that larger cause that direction uh, what means to you what is that purposeful thing that uh, you want to do uh, again i remember one of our alumni from here uh, he said ki mujhe uh, matlab I, i want to do sr ship and then he joined sr ship somewhere and in four months he said ki sir i am not cut out for sr ship and academia i see myself as a practitioner who is managing a 50 bedded 100 bedded intensive care unit okay so he did some additional courses fellowship courses and he is doing that kind of work okay so if he would not have dared if he would have given up on his dream uh, if he would not have explored probably he would not have been able to pursue his passion his dream so that is what uh, uh, is very important in being solution driven don't give up and celebrate small wins because it's not that in public health you will win every other day there would be lot of disappointments uh, so called failures you need to celebrate those small wins successes uh, to sum up in one slide you have to enhance your learning competencies and skills during your three residence three years of residency it has to be a learn act and reflect cycle this is a very simple cycle okay uh, learn regarding uh, what you want to learn act on that reflect on that what worked what did not work how you can be a work in progress so identify your strengths and weaknesses pursue constant improvement seek out mentorship believe me nothing helps like mentors okay again authentic experience real life on ground experience that will help you to solve problems in real life world uh, stay up to date with recent evidences collaborate network with others be proactive be in charge of your own learning don't wait ki aapke guide aapko batayenge kuch karenge understand i am finishing in next 2 minutes okay and care for self and others unless you care for self and others Uh, you will not be able to bring about network or catalyze those changes uh, this is the code that i truly believe in and uh, one of the best uh, feedback that i got from one of uh, our ugs who joined the community medicine somewhere was sir this was the message that we uh, liked from you and it was very simple two words inspire conduct and that has uh, appealed to me emotionally that is what i mean uh think from the heart and uh, this gentleman robert fulgham says don't worry that children never listen to you worry that they are always watching you so as young post graduates you are going to be role models for ugs you are going to be role models for patients you are going to be role models for pgs what you do is going to matter much much more than what you say because they might forget what you say they might ignore what you say but they'll definitely observe and imbibe from what you do so if you can inspire conduct nothing like that you will you will be able to classify yourself in that category of aspirational role models okay uh, i'll have to end with uh, this quote from gandhi ji being from mgims so be the change that you want to see inspire conduct uh, deliberately we have not put what to read in which semester names of books names of journals names of websites feel free to approach us that is my email id that and my whatsapp number and believe me we'll answer each of your queries uh, thank you for overstretch sorry for overstretching on my time and thank you for the opportunity and the patient hearing that's it from my end thank you thank you so much sir you you were kindling the young minds to the extent that probably we were all hooked on to it we ourselves couldn't realize when we uh, were exceeding in case we were the time sir was just a request could you please add about the new cbme curriculum now for the pg students what impact does it have and how the pg students would have probably change or would have had to change in their ways of approaching the subject when it comes to cbme curriculum 
so uh, if you remember there were only two or three slides for which i have mentioned the source and the competencies mentioned there i think uh, almost those competencies align with the competencies that have been mentioned in the competency based medical education curriculum even for our post graduates okay so uh, what is important is identifying those areas on which you want to work upon if you are if you want to excel in uh, as a researcher then you need to have a very sound understanding around let us say epidemiology and statistics okay so you'll have to read about it from the standard textbooks okay there are no shortcuts to that uh, read those special uh, like on epidemiology there is a special lancet series so you'll have to read almost the entire literature that is available it could be those uh, 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 the standard textbooks such special publication series by uh, such uh, esteemed journals uh, there are people who host their own uh, websites like if because i'm talking of epidemiology and if i have to recommend one uh, website i'll say uh, you should explore the teach epi website which is uh, hosted by dr madhukar pai again he is a community medicine professional who is working at the mcgill university in uh, canada and uh, that site in itself is a huge wealth of resource for anybody who wants to have a deeper learning uh, in epidemiology principles related to epidemiology so it will start from first year you cannot wait for that to start in ema second year mein karunga ya ema third year mein karunga shubhasya shigram okay so jo aapka thought hai यदि आप चाहते हो कि आप खुद को एक रिसर्चर की तरह देखते हो सो यू हैव टू डेवलप योर स्किल्स फॉर एपिडीमियोलॉजी आपको वो पढ़ना रिफ्लेक्टिव कन्वर्सेशन आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दोज मेंटर्स एंड इनिशियट दोज कन्वर्सेशन विद देम दैट विल हेल्प यू टू डीपर योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग रिगार्डिंग वॉट यू लर्न एंड एक्सपोज यूर सेल्फ टू द वर्क दैट इज बींग डन जैसे खुद के एग्जाम्पल से बोलना है आरसीटी पढ़ा था Oxford textbook of public health se bhi padha tha but usse kai guna zyada learning tab hui when i worked as a medical officer in the uh, my first randomized control trial okay so uh, you will have to work you will have to apply uh, try and be part of such programs such initiatives such platforms wherein you will able to apply and implement those concepts uh, sorry for the longer answer but i think it was important to uh, have that understanding yes sir definitely and thank you so much sir moving on to our next segment that is the future prospects as a budding community medicine specialist how to understand myself make the undergraduates understand the importance of the subject what additional courses recommendations along the residency that i should pursue and what about my pros prospect as as apart from teaching in medical colleges as a md community medicine specialist i would request dr bhavesh modi sir to please give throw some light on this aspect for all of us oh thank you dr priya and special thanks to dr abhishek for setting the perspective of entire uh, thing that's what i think that's what the we want that you should be a good person good leader good listener and first learn everything and then think about the future because it's like marriage everybody wants a sundar sushil gunwan ladki but aisa kuch hota nahi hai so <laughs> uh, it is something like that you have to uh, work for it so uh, as dr abhishek said first year i would strongly recommend pehle to ek the same thing whether it is love marriage or marriage love karna hai then do it properly otherwise take a call and move forward but uh, the beauty of our branch is like that uh, it's like not like that if you are a surgeon you will just end up doing surgery surgery uh, in our branch there are so many options you can be academician you can be a public health practitioner you can have your own clinic for ncds or uh, something else you can do some fellowship even you can do health economics and do some health insurance type of thing or you can do a research not only like rcd but also pharmaceutical research so it's that's the beauty of uh, community medicine we have uh, so many option but at the same time that's what makes it more confusing so first year should focus on getting all the basics uh, clear uh, epidemiology biostatistic research methodology some health financing and all these communicable diseases non communicable diseases from whatever sources and uh, i think based learning opportunities uh, our field practice area and when you are teaching undergraduate student 
So suppose if you are to teach a uh, TB control program to an undergraduate student, you will read the program, you will take the lecture, and then you will take them to the designated microscopy center, to the dot center, you will interact with the patient, as well as TB supervisor. So from that, you will learn a lot of things. So that's actually competency-based medical education. And that's what opportunity during the residency. Whatever topic you are teaching to UG, at least that topic will be clear for your PG. Uh, and uh, more you interact with those people. And uh, there are so many textbooks. Uh, I would request, if you don't want to get confused, at least finish the IAPSM textbook, uh, which is written by all the experts all over India. And also there are uh, so many standard websites available where you can have your own pace, like one of the platforms is a Swayam by Government of India, where there are so many courses are available. Similarly, ICMR is having a portal with research methodology and uh, uh, ethics related courses are available. Even IAPSM is also coming out with the short courses on research methodology, by June and July, and then some other courses on health economics and health management and health policy. So, and all in all these standard courses offered either by the government or by IAPSM. And also there are uh, universities like John Hopkins, which is my alumni for MPH MBA. Uh, there are also so many courses are available free of cost. There are platforms like Coursera, where you can get all biostatistics series or epidemiological series. Uh, freely uh, at your convenience but finish all this in first year and don't forget uh, when you are expecting to be in market after three years don't try to compare your yourself with the master of public health because they will be maybe nursing students or ayurvedic or most commonly dental doctors who will be just knowing the public health theory and some practical with good communication skills while you all are at least mbbs doctors so while your residency give due emphasis on RTC, UATC, see the patient, the doctor part of MD-PSM is non-replaceable. So when you will have that quality of clinical judgment and connecting with the patient in the field, you will have an upper age compared to MPH. But in your three years, if you'll just keep doing a lot of online courses and know how to use some jargon and make PPTs, you will be in the rat race of MPH and sometime they will beat you. But if you will be connected to the ground, as Dr. Abhishek said, you have read the RCT, but when you have participated in the RCT done in your department or maybe monitoring evaluation project, immunization evaluation, or any project by any of the faculty, whatever is going on the department, that one thing will give you a lot of learning. Like in my residency, uh, the polio elimination part was going on. So I, in my first year, I had more than 15 or 20 rounds uh, where uh, I was there on behalf of WHO to support the immunization. And sometime it was very odd situation. Like we have riots in Gujarat and I was posted in Godhra and particular community was not willing to take the vaccine. So how to convince them, how to bring religious leader on board, how to create the environment. So all on-ground experiences are actually what you will uh, learn during the residency. And uh, uh, so I would suggest finish all your theory part as soon as possible in first year, then apply them during the residency and whatever projects are going, it's a slow process, but study like a surgeon. Maybe at the end of third, first year, they will be just knowing how to take the sutures or dressing and do the protocol and pre and post. Second year, they may be starting doing some appendix or hernia. Maybe third year, something laparotomy, getting them to do complicated surgery immediately after that. So it's a slow process, but first thing is you should have confidence in yourself and your speciality. Then others will have confidence on you. If you will be not having confidence, not feeling well about your a branch then nobody else will like like uh, so first thing is have confidence on yourself and all branches have their own pros and cons so uh, if when you have decided to continue enjoy this is beautiful branch with unlimited opportunity and as far as jobs are uh, job options are available uh, again this is unlimited opportunity uh, government jobs 
you can have like one is an academic job which you know in the medical college you become tutor or assistant professor and so on another is a government of india job other than academic you can go to research organization like icmr uh, like right now uh, the director of national institute of epidemiology dr murekar he is md community medicine right so uh, in icmr there are scientists b with mbbs qualification to scientists c d e this posts are available for md community medicine uh, within the central government health services there are uh, public health officer as well as non academic posts are available where you can ultimately end up being a national level program officer like dg ddg tb or uh, uh, assistant director uh, of vaccination and things like that so lot of government jobs are available at national level also in odd state government uh, the post like district tb officer or rch officer these things are also available through your state level public service commission job which are a permanent where initially you won't be uh, or maybe epidemic medical officer you can join and once you are uh, at certain experience you can have time bound promotions also there are a lot of jobs available in who and unicef through consulting agencies like sams and all this organization are providing another big area for us is the ngos like uh, in uh, maharashtra if we talk there are organization like search in gadchiroli or we have a seva rural in jagadia there are so many such organization which are ngo who are not only providing clinical services as a small hospital but also providing outreach services and taking care of entire blocks or districts for the same so you can have your own ngos also or join with the ngo and uh, you can have more satisfactory job rather than professional job even uh, international firms like usa uh, jobs are also available lot of consulting firms like uh, mckinsey or deloitte or De uh, bcg uh, these jobs are also available but for that you need uh, additional skill set like uh, uh, health policy Level or health management level, uh, even CSR organization uh, like Reliance Foundation or Adani Foundation or so many foundations are there. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, all these foundations are also looking for uh, high quality people as a team leader. Uh, another, as Dr. Abhishek said, even pharmaceutical research. It is not necessarily only pharma person will go. If you are good at statistics and research uh, RCTs, you can also go for pharma research. Also, another. huge branch where there is lot of scope and there is demand supply gap is occupational health there are fellowship offered by uh, niuh as well as uh, iips uh, one or two year courses are also available so occupational health is another professional where we can uh, get entry level job and within 3 4 years the package becomes exponential environment health are also another option also our own uh, nhsrc like uh, uh, nhsrc shsrc uh, so many options so i think uh, this is perhaps the only branch and not only this uh, uh, like our honorable pm said you should not only be a job seeker you can be a job provider also so even if you can start your ngo or small hospital you can generate job for 24 or maybe 50 or 100 people and i have seen uh, organization like seva rural or search gadchiroli who are actually job provider not only they are providing clinical services but also having field practice area doing lot of cohort studies like dr madhukar pai uh, is running so many projects so i think this is the only branch in medical where we have unlimited option from government to ngos to international organization to the grassroots community level or maybe sitting in the room and working at a policy level or even indian institute of management and also iit they also have a uh, separate uh, health management cells into it so i think that's the small short brief from my side we are not giving link of any uh, yeah there is one uh, link which will be shared at the end of it for the public health jobs but i think i'm stopping here we can have more question answer Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Moving on to, as you said, question answers. One of our audiences have asked, sir, what is the opinion on the role of community medicine residents during district residency program, sir? If you could enlighten us. 
district residency program is something that is emerging area uh, and not only community medicine but all others will be posted and also one more thing government of india is trying hard to have a md family medicine program also and basically these are all gray area but uh, what is the gap right now if we talk about from health system viewpoint there are no people uh, who can work in casualty or emergency where it is not only trauma emergency but maybe a patient with high grade fever comes at a night or maybe a lady in last trimester trimester ends up in the hospital or maybe some trauma case so uh, i think uh, what i said earlier uh, don't forget that we all are at least mbbs and during the residency if you practice you can manage the patient of tb or diabetes in much better way than md medicine because uh, our branch not only prescribe medicine but we also give prescription about lifestyle modification and environmental factors suppose if there is a child of asthma we will not just give inhaler we will also talk to them what is the source of allergy are they using uh, what kind of fuel they are using for in the house or all this housing environment as well as lifestyle so i think district residency will be that another opportunity where you will be able to have larger exposure hands on experience uh, that's from my side abhishek can yeah i'll just add to what uh, sir has said sure so, sir uh, regarding district residency program uh, uh, i like the word that he has used uh, let us look at it as an opportunity okay i uh, will uh, there's this huge concept of facility linked community based care uh, if i have to give example jaise uh, nutritional rehabilitation centers uh, almost all district hospitals have a nrc and children from there are discharged and believe me in next three or four months they are back to square one because they back go back go back to the same social milieu and the pediatricians their uh, consultants the other consultants working there have absolutely no clue of working for this Uh, wellness measures how to change this context working around the social determinants of health so can we add that value to the work that is going to be done uh, through such district hospitals and that is something which will be uh, our value addition and we would be valued for so the linkage with community for different uh, it could be even uh, for any i mean uh, for any services just nrc came as an example to my mind okay so that is in brief regarding that uh, that in response to the thank you so much sir i hope that the uh, doubt in our audience's mind is clear to an extent and one more inquisitive question from our google forms which had come was that after doing md community medicine in our country is there any other higher course available like in the clinical side they do super specialization similarly do we have anything or md is the highest in our branch So, so this depends as dr abhishek said what do you want to become after 5 year 10 year or 20 year like as i said if you want to do practice do a fellowship in diabetes or geriatric medicine or palliative care and you can or uh, infectious disease you can do that or uh, if you want to work in a consulting firm work on health economics and things like that or uh, if you want to choose any other branch maybe dr ph or phd can be also done so it's all depends that's a, there is unlimited option in three years you have to decide ultimately which direction you want to go in 20 years and beauty of our branch is even after three or five years you can change your field like if i talk about my thing when i was doing my residency general trend was to do a thesis on health uh, rch reproductive and child that's the only thing most of the my senior are doing but my teacher challenged me can we do something else something on health economics i said why not at that time i had to travel to cmc vellore to meet dr kr john i went to iim ahmedabad just to make my questionnaire what would be your questionnaire of costing analysis because no one in our field was knowing that right and then i thought i will have my career in health economics but suddenly uh, i was posted at commissioner office and i was pushed into tb hiv program when i started doing even i was author for some of the national module i ended up in one of the meeting where we were planning to launch a tobacco control program for the national level in 
Then I started working in Tobacco Control. Then suddenly I went to Hopkins. And after coming back, I started working in health policy. And now I am at INI in Ames doing some other academic work. Uh, so that's, I think, uh, it's a lot of options, but we have uh, to do what we like. Whatever you feel happy, if you enjoy with the patient, do some fellowship in clinical branch and do it. If you want to go to occupational health, do take that branch. If you want to go for consulting firm, you can have some add-on courses for that. So it's your cup of tea, I think, as per the choice. Yes, sir. And also, sir, uh, moving on to the thought that you had shared with us that MPH not going after your post-graduation MD just into the thought that you will be doing MPH. But one of our uh, students have also asked that then abroad, what is the scope for our branch? Because MPH, as you have also mentioned, and we all know, is financially less rewarding. So one wants to know what can be done in order to, produce, to pursue studies in US, UK, Canada, and earn as much as the physicians, surgeons abroad. See, just to share in Hopkins, uh, where I did uh, MPH, not because of MPH, but it was MPH MBA dual degree. But there, same like us, they have MD preventive medicine residency. And by default, in the first year of the preventive medicine residency, they have to do MPH. So all the theory part, epidemiology, bio state, and health management, everything is part of that theory. I think that is the missing link for us because all the medical colleges, uh, some places there are structured program teaching happening, but most of the time it is self-learning. And that's what we are missing. So I think if we can cover MPH is nothing, uh, it's basically what we are teaching to UGs, if we know at least that much, that's part of But somehow the teaching schedule is not happening. That's what I think we should try to see at least minimum first year what topic should be covered. As far as abroad is concerned, uh, our degrees are not valid there. So uh, uh, better option is to enroll for maybe PhD or DRPH there. And then you can have an academic job. Or give USMLE, take admission in preventive medicine residency, and then you can have that salary. But otherwise, by doing MPH, there you will get MPH level salary only. And uh, it's my personal experience. Uh, if you really want to get satisfaction and give outcome, you should work in developing countries. There is a lot of need here and you can do a lot of things here rather than working at the bottom of the pyramid in uh, US or UK. Here you can actually contribute in the community. That will, that will give a lot of happiness and satisfaction. That's my personal comment. Yes, sir. Uh, adding to what you actually said, uh, some of our uh, students have also said that each student goes through that dilemma. All of us know that every college teaches PSM in a different way. So everybody of us is in a uh, in a state of confusion. You may say that what is the standard curriculum for MD community medicine and why is the standard one-stop uh, curriculum not followed all across all the colleges in the country, sir? Uh, I think if you look at the curriculum, uh, it has been mentioned that what we are expected to teach, uh, whatever competencies that we were talking about, uh, it is more related to what uh, Bhavesar was saying that uh, the training programs that happen, they are not uniform in all our departments. So some, somewhere you will find that there is extra effort uh, that has been, uh, uh, that those departments are making. Uh, in many other departments, uh, ek, kalam bolte, ek standard line bol diya jata hai ki PG is all about self-learning. And then uh, there, are, there are not much inputs that are provided by the faculty there. So I think it has to be a, a, a mix of both, wherein uh, you motivate them, inspire them for self-learning, for exploration, uh, but guide them where to look for, uh, which courses to attend, uh, uh, where uh, which institutes to go and visit for exposure to broaden their own thought process. And that is where uh, the uh, platform would get a bit leveled. And uh, I think even PGs can think for themselves. I mean, uh, they uh, need not be dependent on uh, uh, 
the department or institute because of this technology world has become a very smaller world okay and like what bhavesh sir was saying there are many such uh, courses uh, that are available uh, which will help you to build your competencies okay so if you can build your competencies and practice them in your own departments uh, what i can say from my own experience is uh, many times uh, people do not want to do themselves uh, something new but they will not stop you if you are taking the initiative or yadi koi rukawat bhi nahi kar raha even that is a kind of passive support which most of our pgs would enjoy okay so uh, somewhere they will have to create those opportunities for themselves so uh, i mean uh, it, it, uh, we should not expect that there should be those tailor made opportunities that are available everywhere but then uh, considering if we are clear regarding what we want to learn suppose we want to learn regarding statistics so there are uh, online on site programs workshops that are available online courses that are available aap wahan pe ja ke karo usko aake apne uh, department mein chhota sa data leke there are data sets that are available in public domain uh, permission se wo access karke download karke apply whatever you have learnt on that and that is how that learning will happen and that is what i meant by learn reflect and act okay so aapko samajhna hoga uske liye effort karna hoga you have to reflect and then further act on that i hope i have answered the question definitely sir sir moving on would want to know how can we make use of artificial in- intelligence abhi sab jagah par artificial intelligence is more more shining than the individual intelligence though so how can we make use of that in community medicine sir see uh, what uh, like a computer can work for 50000 normal people but 50000 computer cannot work for one person with common sense so i think ai is something like that a <laughs> uh, lot of things can be simplified uh, using ai protocols uh, maybe uh, like we are working on couple of projects where uh, using the x ray algorithm because we don't have radiologists at chc or phc level but we have machines so using the algorithm can be done so this uh, ai can be a good tool maybe using cough sound to diagnose covid or tb or so many ai related solution are coming at but that should not be a replacement for a common sense so uh, uh, that should uh, prevail and we should not like it's a good emerging area we should have some knowledge if possible we should try to be part of some of the project where uh, ai related tools are developed but that should not be a replacement for uh, a common sense that's what i would uh, just say in a one sentence about ai definitely sir as they say common sense is very uncommon and now coming to the end i will urge my fellow mates and the audience to also please see our lecture on how to prepare our cv because that will help to give a strong base for launching into the field post your md and last but not the least i would like to thank all our pg coordinating team definitely our teachers who have enlightened us with this much knowledge have have uh, spared their valuable time for us and also our pg coordinating team dr milli panda madam dr parak chawda sir dr sohanjan chakravarti sir nothing could have been possible without the technical support provided today by dr varun vani our sincere gratitude to dr am kadri sir president ipsm and all the office bearers for supporting us in this pg lecture series please do subscribe to the ipsm e connect channel to stay tuned to our future event events as the moderator of this session this is dr priya vani signing out thank you so much